Come on, thank you. Remain standing, remain standing. Thank you so much. It is indeed an honor to be here at Potential Church. Uh, I'd like to thank Pastor Troy and Stephanie for having me here as a guest, a guest speaker today to share with you my story, to share the goodness of Jesus and, and what he's done in my life and, and what he'll do in your life. He'll do the same for you like he did for me. So I just want to share that with you. Um, I have two books here. Uh, it's called Straw. I wrote this book about three years ago in 09. It was a New York Times bestseller and an LA Times bestseller. It talks about how God changed my life, you know, the struggles and how I had to go through everything, but how God changed my life. Uh, and I bought it for two men that are thinking about giving up. Because let me tell you, there's three types of storms. Either you're in a storm, or a storm is on the way, or you just came out of a storm. So there's three types of storms that we go through. And this will change your life. Two gentlemen here today that's thinking about, I don't know, I don't know. There's one right there. See, you don't waste no time. There you go, brother. <laughs> Bless you. There you go. All right. Bless you. Yes. You know, I was just thinking about the song they were saying, you know, I will seek, you know, the goodness of the Lord, you know, the everlasting God, because that's who he is. He's the everlasting God, and he understands every moment, every situation, every trial, every tribulation, every issue that we have. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you right now. I thank you for all that here today, Lord. I pray that someone may hear the goodness of you, Lord. Use me as a vessel, Lord. Use me for your glory, Father. I thank you for all that are in attendance today, Lord. I don't know who struggling, who has issues, but you know, Lord. And Lord, I just ask you to touch them right now in the midst of their storms, their situations. Just deliver a word through me that they will know that Jesus is the answer. There is no other answer, Father. Father, I love you, I praise you, and I thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I have come here to just talk about really life, you know, and, and, and the issues, you know, that we all, we all have. It doesn't mean you're a bad person or a wrong person. You know, it's life issues that occur inside of us that we never deal with, we never face, you know. There was all my issues. There I was, a young man growing up, and my father beat the crap out of me and told me I would never mount to nothing, and, 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 and I had issues already at such a young age. I was in teen trouble issues, but I picked up sports and baseball and wanted to play, and I wanted to prove him wrong, you know, because I hated my father for everything that he did to me, you know, and told me I wouldn't be nothing, and my mom divorced, he, you know, he was a bully to her, and, you know, just all kind of things that happened in my childhood. See, nobody never knows that part. They only know the great part, you know, but that part was a rough time in my life. You know, my dad was a raging alcoholic, you know, and he was, he had issues and, you know, I developed the issues and the issues became a part of who I was, you know. And I, I ended up, like I said, I ended up, you know, not caring too much for him. And, um, you know, I think about it, you know, not caring too much for him and struggling with him in, in my life and stuff. And then coming to this place where I get my life saved and God ended up, this is another story in itself, God ended up using me to get my father and I got him saved. See, and it's, it's like, it's like God was looking at me and saying, who are you? You know, who are you? Who are you to, you know, put hatred towards your father and, and, and leave him out of your life? You know, after all you achieved and stuff, he wasn't a part of it. And he was in the hospital and he was sick. And I, was, I went there and I laid on his lap and, and I cried so hard. And I asked him to forgive me for being so wrong and not letting him in my life. Forgive me. Two wrongs don't make a right. God said, who are you? I forgave you. I spared you. Issues. Some things we never deal with. Some things we never tackle in our life. You know, I had issues. 
with that. Had issues with my father. Had issues with, you know, playing baseball. Had issues coming up in baseball in the minor leagues. And, you know, I remember I was thinking about quitting my second year. I was thinking about quitting. I was this close to quitting. This close. Because I had issues. Had I quit, I would have never been an eight-time All-Star. I would have never won four World Series. See, somebody need to know, somebody needs to know sitting here today, need to know that your issues doesn't define who you are. It's just part of what we go through. It's part of dealing, you know. If you understand the issues of life, it's just like, it's just like understanding the Bible. You have to understand the Bible because everybody, the stories you read about in the Bible with people, they had issues. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, issues. The Israelites, 40 years, issues. They had issues. We're no different. You know, that's 2,000 years ago when that took place. We're no different. God is the same yesterday and today and forevermore. God has not changed. If you read the Bible, God has not changed. If you dissect the Bible, it's the same. You know, he created, he created this, he created all of us, he created the earth, he created who we were. He is God. And if you read the Bible and open it up, you'll start understanding. See, that's what I had to do. But I didn't, I never dissected, I never got there because of my issues. How many of us deal with that? How many of us struggle with that? I don't want to go to church because of, you know, something wrong with the church. No, it's something wrong with me. I got issues. I was sitting in church and like, can't believe it. somebody's talking about living holy. I had issues, so you can't live holy if you don't have, if you got issues, if you're not dealing with them. There's issues keep you separated from the love of God. And my issues kept me separated. I was thinking about when I was flying in here, and so far nine years ago, I was living here driving down 95, smoking dope, crazy out of my mind. Issues, major issues, you know, I had major issues. A person that had cancer twice, lost my left kidney in my second surgery, I had major, major issues, not dealing, running from them. That's what most of us do. And then we're afraid to come and know who this man Jesus is. We can't know him because we won't lay our issues down. But he says, come as you are. Jesus says, come as you are. I'll take all your problems and all your issues and all your burdens. I've already paid the price for it on Calvary for you. You need to understand that. He's already done it for you. It's already done. It's already fixed. It's just a matter of us getting into the operation system of who we are and getting the right information so we can get the true revelation of who we are. The true revelation is in Christ. It is not in anything else. I search for it in any, everything. There I was when I had just, there I was becoming a free agent in 1991, a free agent to, to go leave New York after playing eight years in New York. I already made $8 million, so I, I've had money but I got issues. I just signed a $20 million contract and I'm hurting. Wife leaving, kids leaving, I got issues. Well, everybody say, well, you had it, you could have it, you could have it all. It doesn't mean you don't have issues. It's just stuff. I accumulated cars, homes, everything. It's like King David's son Solomon had. The richest man in Jerusalem at the time, had everything. Had it all. But he said, what does it all mean? It is all meaningless if you don't know the almighty God. What does it all mean? It means nothing. You know, see, we're searching for it, we're searching for it. See, I was searching for it all to fix me. Fix me, fix me, fix me, you know? But there I was, signed a $20 million contract, and that's when my first encounter came with Christ. I accepted Christ in 1991 at a Morris Cirillo conference. 
because I was hurting. I already had money. I already had cars. I already had stuff. That, wasn't gonna, that didn't make me happy. I'm sitting in this $2 million home, you know, with a tennis court, swimming pool, and I'm saying, is this all it is to life? Is this all it is? I said, it's got to be more. I said, I got to be created for something more than this. This is not it. This is not the answer. You know, and I tried to feel that. See, when you got issues, you try to feel it with everything. Okay, I'll just buy another car. Okay, I'll just go get me a couple more Delilahs and Jezebels. <laughs> I'll get them to fix me. Well, I'll just smoke this dope here. I'll hide out. And there I was, nine years ago. You know, I was at an NA convention and met the love of my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God, my wife today, Tracy. She was my girlfriend at the time. We met at a, a narcotics anonymous meeting. She had one year clean, I had one second clean. <laughs> there she was, the saving, saving angel that I had cried out for us. Because we all need somebody. And when you realize that God has given you a helpmate, she's there to help you. You know, man, we talk about, well, I'm the head. Well, yeah, you, you, you're supposed to be the head, but not the knucklehead. <laughs> and see, that was me. I was the knucklehead, you know. And there I was, and Tracy was leading me down the road, and she was, she was here, South Florida, driving down 95 with friends of mine. I got a few of them sitting here in the front row today, um, driving down 95 looking for me. I'm in dope houses, smoking dope. She come banging on the door in dope houses, saying, you're going to live. God's got a purpose. God's got a plan for you. God's got a call on your life. You don't see it, but I see it. <laughs> see, we just don't know. We, don't, we never know because they got issues when you got issues. That's why in this text, I love to see the Bible is with everybody that's got all kind of different issues, you know. And this woman in here in Mark 5, Verse 25 through 29, she had a blood issue. She had a blood issue for 12 years, constant bleeding for 12 years. She went to many doctors. She went to paid everything. That's just like to me. I went to many treatment centers. I paid for every lawyer, but I got issues. She had an issue for 12 years, and she went to many doctors. But she heard about this man named Jesus was coming through the crowd. Let me get down and deep in this text, because this is us in the text. When you can understand the text, when you read the Bible and you can understand the text, it's not the problem in the text, it's the solution. The solution is watch what Jesus does. See, we look at the problem too much, and we don't look at the solution or watch what Jesus does. A woman in the crowd has suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She has suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she has spent everything she had to pay them. But she hadn't gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. Now, how many of us know the situation get worse before it gets better? Come on. You know, when we look at it, when we really look at it, the situation gets worse before it gets better. That was the same thing in my life. The situation got worse before it got better. Everything. Everything falling apart. Life just falling apart. At every turn, at every turn I made, life was falling apart. Because see, when I accepted Christ in 91 and went to the Morris Cirillo Conference, little did I know when I got radically saved and Morris Cirillo laid hands on me and he said, son, your life will never be the same. All hell finna break loose. All hell broke loose for the next 20 years. This is 12 years for her. The Israelites, 30 years. No, they spent 40 years in the wilderness, 11-day trip, 40 years, because they had issues complaining. I had issues, 20 years of issues. See, God, has, God has, doesn't make the mistake. God doesn't make the mistake. We make the mistake. God doesn't make the mess. We make the mess. God helps us clean it up, but we have to do our part to be able to get to this great place with God. Verse 27, she had heard about Jesus, 
So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. She thought for herself, if I could just touch his robe, I would be healed. Immediately the bleeding stopped it. And she, could, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Hallelujah. Terrible condition. See, I had issues. I had all kind of terrible conditions. But I heard about Jesus. But in the text, this, this woman, Jesus healed in faith. Jesus doesn't heal on how you feel. Jesus healed in faith. It is his faith. What is faith? Faith is a commitment to the mind and the heart. See, she had a commitment to her mind and her heart. Her mind said, if I could only get to Jesus. But guess what? Her heart got her there. See, it takes two. It takes your mind and your heart to get you there, to get to him. And that was the situation with this woman. It was her mind and her heart that got her to Jesus. That's how she got well. It was my mind and my heart that got me to Jesus. And that's how I ended up getting well. You know, I think about when we left here nine years ago. Tracy was like, we're leaving Florida. I'm like, where are we going? She said, we're going to Missouri. I said, I ain't going to Missouri. Ain't no black folks there. But that's how I got issues. You know, you see what I'm saying? I got issues. I'm saying, ain't no black folks in Missouri. I ain't going to live in no Missouri. You know? You know, because they look at my wife. She's, yeah, she's white, you know. And um, like I tell everybody, she was the only one who wanted me. <laughs> Nobody else wanted me. Nobody else wanted to have nothing to do with me. But glory to God, I got the right one. You know? See, and that's because I got issues, you know, I got issues. She said, we're going to Missouri. So I said, okay, here it is. I ain't got nothing. Remember, I'm leaving here. We're going to Missouri. Okay, I'm being stripped by God because I got issues. You know, she's pulling me out of dope hours. She went away one time. I never told this story, though. She went away one time, and only me and her know this. She went, she went away one time, and I hooked up with some, some, her, some, some old friends, you know, here, and, and I... It, and I ended, up, I ended up shooting dope. I ended up shooting heroin. I never shot dope before in my life. Never even told my sponsors and them. They're sitting there. I ended up shooting dope one time. And I was tripping for three days. And she was out of town. And she said, that's it. You know, we're getting out of here. It's the first time I ever shot dope. And I was like, I like this. See, because I got issues. See, when you got issues, you like anything. There's no telling. You know, no telling what you like. You might like the wrong man. You might like the wrong woman. You know, when you got issues, because we're trying to fix what's hurting inside. And this woman here, she got healed because of her faith. So I needed to operate in faith. So Tracy go to Missouri and we're going to stay with her parents' house. There I am, the eight-time All-Star, four-time World Series champ, made millions of dollars, don't have a driver's license. And when I left South Florida nine years ago, I was $3 million in debt. What do you do? What do you do when you got issues? What do you do? There I was, the great Daryl Strawberry. And we got there and we said, we're going to get our life right with Christ. We ain't married. Check this out. This is a defining moment in my life. This is what changed my life and changed her life. We ain't married. We studied, Tracy's studying the Word, which she always has. Studied it for 12 years, getting up at 5.30 every morning. She still do it. I ain't getting up at 5.30, Lord. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I get up when it's like 9.30, you know. But what do you do, you know, when you have the issues like I had? So she, this is a defining moment in our, my life. She wakes up one morning. She goes, we ain't having sex no more. I said, what? <laughs> but it changed my life. Somebody need to hear this. She cut me off. She cut herself off, and she cut me off. Because we wasn't married, 
and we wasn't living right. So she stopped me. And that sent me on my journey. So where do I go? She, I, she said, we ain't having sex no more. I said, I'm out of here. She said, yeah, I think that's what you need to do. We didn't know if we'd get back together. We didn't know what was going to happen. But I had to trust God. I had to trust God that God had a plan for me that I didn't even know about. That's when my faith started operating. There I was, the great Daryl Strawberry, going back home to Southern California to stay with my sister Regina and her three kids in a two-bedroom apartment with no driver's license and no money. Now, how is this going to work, God? <laughs> but God had already had it all figured out. See, we just don't know. What you don't know, you don't know until you open up the book, and then God can reveal it to you. And that's what happens to us. You know, he's not able to reveal it to you until you open up the book and start reading the Bible and learning about who you are. Because, see, if you get this here, this blueprint, this information, this information is the revelation of your life. Because Jesus will start speaking to you, and he'll start showing you who you are. He'll start showing the plan he has for you. He'll start showing you the greatness of who you are. John 4, 1 John 4, 4 says, greater that he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's the great one that lives inside of you. It's the great one that lives inside of you. We don't even know it. Jesus has said that, that we will be able to do greater things than him. We can. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ, not through myself. See when, I was, well, see, when I was operating in myself, I had issues. I was making foolish moves. I was making foolish mistakes because I had too many issues. So I stayed with my sister, and this was the defining moment. And when I got there at her bedroom apartment, she gave, me her, she gave me her bedroom. I took the Bible. God said, just don't even open it. I said, get down on your knees. I got down on my knees, and I, I put my head down, and this is what God said. I've been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you. I cried, I cried, I repented, and I got with God for six months in a consecration. I stopped everything, sex, drugs, everything, my whole life. You're talking about a man that had everything and had done everything. I stopped everything. It was a defining moment in my life with God. My whole life changed. I started shifting. I started going to church every day. I started got involved in church. I was going up there just to help. Start going to help feed the homeless. Got out of myself. Stopped thinking about my own problems. God started restoring me inside. He started putting his word down inside me. He started to speak to me. See, we miss it. We miss God. We miss God. We miss it, that he's the everlasting God. He's alive and well. We miss him when we don't know him. See, I didn't know him. So how can I express how I feel if I don't know him. If you don't know him, you can't understand him. You have to get to know him. We come to church to fellowship, but we're in a relationship personally with God by ourselves through his word. It's what changed me. And then I went back and married Tracy. Then we started on our life. We started building. And we built, and we built, and God restored everything. God cleaned up everything, step by step. Didn't happen overnight. It was a step by step by step. You know, it wasn't an overnight miracle, like something just, some lightning just came down and just says, okay, your situation's over. No, it was a process, but we did it right. We got married, I went back and I married her, we got right and we started walking. We started walking with God. We started going to church. Everybody thought we was crazy. <laughs> oh, yeah, you on that God, Jesus thing. Yeah, I was on the world thing. They don't complain. See, the world don't complain when you're on the world thing. John 10, 10, the devil, the thief comes to steal, kill, destroy. Jesus said, but I came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. That's what Jesus said. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come through the Father except through me. See, we learn who Jesus is. Jesus equipped us. 
We become a spirit and truth of understanding who Jesus is. I was a baseball player. Hit grand slams, home runs, won championships. Let me tell you right now, Jesus wasn't concerned about Daryl Strawberry hitting no grand slams. <laughs> Jesus had more, more important things worrying about Daryl Strawberry. I need his soul to be right. Because he on his way to hell if he don't get his soul right. You know, he ain't concerned about how many championships I won and how many all-star games I played in. Jesus is worrying about, am I going to do what the Father has called us to do down here? He's going to equip me with his spirit. He's going to equip me with spirit and truth. I'll be able to operate in him, and I'll be able to do those things that he called us to do here on earth. That's what he's called us for. We all got a purpose here for him to do his will, not our will. I thought I had it going on. Thought I had it going on, but I didn't. I was living a lie. You know, I was living in sin. I wanted more of this, more of that, more of everything. And the Bible said the wages of sin is death. That's where I was headed, death. See, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for who God is. I'm grateful for that I said yes. I'm grateful that I decided to lay my life down and pick up my cross and carry it. Because it's heavy, even with the issues. But you got to remember, Jesus carried the cross to Calvary. It was heavy. But he knew on his way to Calvary, he knew what he was going to do. He knew that he was going to save this world. And he knew that he would save the loss, and it will save the ones with issues and struggles. Stop trying to be perfect. You know, I try to be perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. You know, we have real issues as people, and there's only one that can free us from those issues, and his name is Jesus. He's the one. Faith come by hearing. And by hearing the word of God, that's where faith comes. It's by hearing. Romans 10, 17. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added into you. We're seeking for the wrong things. There's a great kingdom up there. When you understand and know that you seek the great kingdom of God, you got everything. It's not talking about material things. You have everything, everything you need. See, the enemy don't want you to know the truth. He does not want you to know the truth. Because if he can keep you from knowing the truth, he'll let you go to church. He'll let, because that was my life. I had issues. He said, oh, he can go to church. But he got a lot of issues. I know he'll walk out of church and won't nothing change. But little did he know, he don't have the power over me. He don't have the control over me. You know? And that's the same for you. He don't have the power over you. He don't have the control over you. Jesus has the power and control over you if you let him control your life. If you let him. That's, that's the whole key. Letting him control your life. Letting him be Lord over your life. That's what it's all about. See, I have surrendered my life to Christ. I have allowed Christ to be Lord over my life. I no longer operate in my flesh. I operate in my spirit. Because that's what the power is. See, I didn't know, little did I know that my flesh didn't have no power. My flesh didn't have no power. Because my flesh just wanted more of this, more of that, more of that, more of that. And I just got more and more and more and more, more and more, more issues. That's the question you have to ask yourself today, church. What do I stand? What do I stand? What do, what do I see in myself, Lord? See, because I had to go to Jesus, and I says, Jesus, show me who I am I. Somebody today need to ask Jesus, show me. In your quiet time, 
with him. See, you, see, you, have, to, you have to get with Jesus for him to speak to you. And you have to be born again of the Spirit to be able to hear him speak to you. He loves you no matter what. You know, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've been through, no matter who's hurt you, no matter who has told you you're nothing, that devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. See? Because we, we have victory in knowing Christ. I think about John 5 and this man. You know, he was, he was a lame man and for 38 years, he was sitting by the pool. For 38 years, see, we all got issues. Issues, those are issues. 38 years, you know, he's got this issue and he's sitting there, he's lame. Jesus come along and asked him, do you want to get well? Woman had a blood issue for 12 years. Her faith touched Jesus, robe, got healed. Terrell Strawberry had issues for 20 years. Jesus kept saying, do you want to get well? This is what he said to the man laying there. Do you want to get well? Man never got in the water. For 38 years, he sat there. Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? The man said, but sir, I, you know, everybody jumps in before me. I have all these problems. You know, I can't do this. He didn't ask him that. He says, do you want to get well? Jesus asked somebody today, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? He is who he said he is. He's the light of the world. He's the Alpha, he's the Omega. He's the beginning, he's the end. He created you, he know you, he know everything about you. There's no secrets with him. When God finally called me and I came and I said yes, he said, son, I need to tell you, I saw everything that you did, there's no secrets. We think we get in the way, but there's no secrets. He says, I'm just glad you made it home. So I'm asking you today, like this man sitting for 38 years, years. Do you want to get well? That's what Jesus asked him. Do you want to get well? And the man said, yes. He says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Woman touched his, woman touched his robe, healed, 12 years, 20 years. Asked me, do I want to get well? Yeah. Surrendered my life, gave my life to him. Look what the Lord has done. Do you want to get well? What do you want? Do you want to consume yourself with the world? Consume the world don't love you. Never, never did, never will. They didn't love me. They were all laughing. They were laughing when I fell. God said, don't worry, I'm going to use you. So my question today, my question today to you is do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? Do you want to see the glory of who Christ is? You have to ask yourself that, church. You're sitting with all your issues and, and believing and thinking that you have to be perfect. There's not a such thing as perfect. He was the only one perfect. That's why he came. And he came for us. Oh, aren't you, I mean, oh, I just get so excited that he came for us with all our issues and all our problems. He came to give us life and to give it more abundantly to us. Man, he's such an awesome God. He's such a loving God. Jesus rock. You know? If you don't know that, if you don't know that, so you haven't experienced him like I have, you don't know that because I've been with him and I know now. He rock, man. He's awesome. I ain't nothing. I don't care what kind of baseball player I was. I care about that. I care
care how many championships I won. Jesus went to the cross and went to death. He conquered death and got up on the third day. Ain't nobody else getting up. Man, Jesus is bad. You know? So my question to you today, do you want to get well? It's, it's time. It's time. It's time to make some changes. It's time to deal with your issues. Let God deal with those issues. And let God start changing, changing the way you think, you know. And just take a minute to, to look inside. I'm just going to ask you. I don't know, I just feel the move of God, you know. I'm just going to ask you, uh, if you want to get well, I want to just pray for you. You know, I just love God so much. God's been so good to me. You know, I've been through so much. You know, I've been through addiction, cancer. I had cancer twice, lost my left kidney in my second surgery. Look what God has done. Somebody need to know he hasn't forgot about you. He hasn't forgot about you. You got to trust him. He loves you. Nobody going to love you like Jesus. Not your husband, not your wife, not your kids, nobody. I love my wife, but I love Jesus. Nobody's going to love you like Jesus. No. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you today, just bow your head for a minute. Just think about it. Look inside. You know if God's tugging at you, he's pulling at you, he's tugging at you, he's pulling at you, he's saying, come on, come on. That's what he was saying. Come on, Daryl, come on, Daryl. You got to go. You got to go this way. You got to stop going that way. There's nothing over there. I got a greater plan for you. I got a greater place for you. I got a greater purpose for your life. That's what God's saying. You got to get involved. You got to get involved in church. You got to start doing something. It's not about you. It's about somebody else. It's about you helping somebody else. That's what we're here for. We're only here for a short time. We're not here for a long time. God's pulling at you right now. I just want to ask you to come down. I want to ask you to come down to this altar. I just feel something right now, and I just want to pray. If that's you, with your issues, and you know God's calling, God's changing the chain, come right now. Get out of your seat. Come right now. Trust God right now. Trust God. Glory to him. Come on. Don't be afraid. Just come down to the altar. Come to, we're going we're to we're get some things right today. We're going to break some things off of us today. We're going to get set free here today. Lord, I love you. Lord, I made mistakes. Lord, I did things that I shouldn't have done. Forgive me, Lord. Come now. Come now to the altar. God loves you right where you're at. He wants to do something in you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Look at me. I was a messed up baseball player. Millions of dollars. Lifestyle. Rich famous, messed up. Look what the Lord has done. He'll do it for you too. But you got to take that first step. You got to take that first step. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks. See, I sat in those seats. I almost missed it because I, I was holding on to my seat, holding on to it. No, 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 no. I almost missed it. I almost missed God's purpose. Young people, don't miss God's purpose. Young people, if you can get God right now, get God right now. It's going to save you a lot of headaches. It's going to save you a lot of headaches to know Jesus. It's going to save you a lot of headaches to live right. Because he loves you right where you're at. It's not a show. He's an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He loves you in all your mistakes. Everything that I did, he loved me. Look at all filthy me. He cleaned me up. He saved me, kept me healthy, had cancer twice. Look at me, drug addiction. He says, I'm going to use you. While the world's talking about you, I'm going to use you. And that's the same he'll do for you. But you have to surrender your life to him. And you have to give, your, give yourself to God and say, Lord, I'm yours. I've had enough. No more world. I'm tired. Oh, he loves you. Ain't nobody like him. 
I done had everything. Best car, best home. Don't even come close to Jesus. Doesn't even come close to him. We're going to pray. I'm going to pray, God, those that came down and those that thought about coming down and didn't come down, I'm going to pray for you too because we all need prayer because we all got issues. We all got struggles. Father, I just come to you in the name of Jesus, Lord. And Lord, I send up this petition to you of thanksgiving, Lord, and we thank you for today. We thank you for the lives that have come down here today, Lord, to, to say to you, Lord, I'm sorry. I got issues. I've made mistakes. Forgive me. Lord, you know none of us are perfect. None of us always make the right choice, but we know you make the right choice, Lord. We thank you for the lives that have come today. We pray for them. We pray for just a new freshness in them right now, Lord. I ask that you touch each one of them deep down in their spirit right now. I ask that you deal with their issues, their situations, the heartaches, the marriage, the relationships, the kids. Lord, deal with us. We need you. We thank you, Lord, because you're our Savior. And you give us all not a first chance, a second chance, a third chance. You give us chances all the time, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for each and every one here today, everyone that's came to the altar, Lord. You know their, their pain, their sorrow, Lord. I just pray right now that you just minister to them, minister to their heart. And Lord, just let them know that they are loved by you no matter what has transpired in their life, Lord. You're the great God, the everlasting God. And Lord, we be sure to give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen.